Roads? It's the Ernest Hancock Show. Where we're going, there aren't any roads. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence of me, Ernest Hancock, and Dick Morris, author of God on Trial. Now, what we're doing is, uh, you know, we, we, we'll we get to it. You know, we just got to get past all the definitions of what we're talking about and so on, because I already know what the, audi- I know what the audience is going to do. They're sitting out there, primarily the audience of this show. I would bet you the majority of of uh, agnostic just don't care. Why are we even talking about this? The, the rest are atheists, and there's some people of faith whatever faith that may be. So my question is, in the 80s, as I was uh, immersing myself in a lot of reading and so on, I, would, uh, I was very interested in unification theory, which is, you know, the weak, magne- uh, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, gravity, electromagnetism. There's going to be a unification theory of we have whatever. It's uh, interesting. As I was going through that, and they're starting to come up with terms like the looking for the God particle. And now they have, you know, CERN and the, the uh, particle accelerator in Europe. They're doing the big giant. We're going to find it. We're going to look for God. And he's really small. And he's really teeny tiny. And he's in this little kind of whatever in our math and sensors can. What, how the heck they're going to do that? Whatever. But the thing is, is that I'm going, is it possible? And it was happening in a lot of people that would come out that they, scientists, are getting to the point that they were making the argument that through critical thinking, they're getting to the point that they're, they're kind of like, you know, they're more open to a spiritual kind of, and, and what if by doing these particle accelerators, we're creating little universes. I mean, we're a dust speck in, uh, you know, the pocket of some 12 year old kid in uh, another dimension that did this uh, particle accelerating kind of what I had a heck do we know? So the point is, is that they were asking the same question. Do we know? And the more we think we know, the more questions we have. And it gets to a point to where can you have critical thinking get you to a point that there is a higher power? No. Okay. Because. Let's go back to God on trial for just a minute, which, by the way, you can get at uh, www.godontrial.ws. WS stands for website, I guess. I don't know what it is, but anyhow, it's .ws. But God on trial covers a number of errors in thinking using illustrations of the typically defined God, uh, the so-called justice system or the court system that's there, economics, government. Uh, These are all examples that that I use to show the consequences of errors in critical thinking, errors or effective thinking. A lot of people call it effective thinking as distinct from critical thinking, because if what we want to do is gain knowledge, and you would probably want me to define that as well, correct? Please. (laughs) You know, the one that, and what will segue into this is that uh, I give you an example. I was on uh, a libertarian list in New Zealand because we were researching New Zealand. We're thinking, you know, back when they were on their way to more, uh, you know, non socialist, uh, collectivist, and then they kind of switched back, you know. But at the time during the early 2000s, we were looking at maybe our family was open to the idea of even moving to New Zealand. As I went on libertarian list there asking about different things, and I find out they're just a property of the queen and got a privy council, and she she vetoes whatever their Supreme Court does anyway. I'm like, never mind, next. But during that process, I'm with all these libertarians, and one of the first questions they wanted to know after they got to know me and we're conversing, and I'm doing the hardcore libertarian thing and just slapping a lot of them around because they're not as, what's the first thing? they Oh, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Before I believe another word out of your mouth, are you someone of faith? Regardless of what I had to say, regardless of how correct or right or supported anything that I would say, if I was someone of faith and was not pronounced my atheism, then I was too crazy to have an opinion. So I go, okay, is it a prerequisite to be an atheist for you to think someone can be? capable of critical thinking. 
No, I've in fact I've taken courses, many courses from people who profess to believe in one God or another. The uh, we have to look at it a little bit uh, differently than though I think the way you're proposing it. That if knowledge is the goal of thinking, I like to think it is thinking as distinct from feeling or emotions or something like that. But if knowledge is going to be the goal of thinking, then effective thinking must use tools that achieve the goal in a reliable fashion. And those tools you don't learn innately. Those tools you actually have to study. So what would be knowledge? I thought I'd throw that one out. Is what is a, uh, what is, how are we going to define knowledge? And knowledge would be actually a justified belief, justified that you have a basis for that belief and the expectations of the belief can be replicated, constantly fulfilled, knowing that they're going to be working. That's how you can tell something that works from something that doesn't, a true belief from a false belief. Okay. Well, I just thought you would like to know that. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to see how a belief in something that can't be proven or disproven. I mean, that was kind of the point of, uh, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, it's, it's, can it be disproven? Well, no, no, that's the, oh, that's a, if you cannot prove a negative, that's a major fallacy that people who have not studied critical thinking or effective thinking are guilty of trying to prove a negative. It is absolutely impossible. Let me give you an example of that. Someone says, uh, there's green cheese on the other side of the moon. And you say, no, there isn't. And they say, prove that there isn't. You can't. You can disprove a positive by saying the evidence that supports your proposition is an error. But you can never, ever prove a negative. And that's one of the great fallacies that is committed by most people. And, and this is the one thing I can't get uh, acknowledgement from and where, you know, Mark and I always kind of get to this point and stop. Maybe is we that, can continue. Is that, oh, well, we'll see if we can. My thing is, is that I'm going, there have been personal, very unique to me, that I don't look to some book for, you know, affirmation of or validation or absolution for any, or whatever criteria I'm looking for somebody with a collar, okay, that I personally experience that I'm not going to reject. That had a, a profound effect on you, me. Are you talking about hallucinations? Whatever. That's not my point. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get to define it. I do. And that's my uh, point. No, do you get to define what's in my head? So that's where Mark goes, well, as long as we can, you know, just, you know, uh, all agree that, you know, God's in your head. Well, then we can be, okay, then we're done. Because where else would he be? It is my perception of whatever has happened to me. And there are so many times somebody will come in and say, no, what you experienced Either one didn't happen, was uh, perceived incorrectly by you. It's what I say it is. You know what somebody else says happened to me. I'm like, how is that any better <laughs> or different? I mean, I you know that's why they go into they call it witness or your testimony or something like that. Hey, this is what I experienced. This is the you know what happened. This is my you know uh, testimony witness. This is it. It's nothing more, nothing less. It's mine done. We're, we're done. No, we're not done. You're not allowed to give that perception because I'm going to tell you uh, what that perception is. And I'm going, um, why would I accept that? That would not be allowed under the rules of critical thinking. Some people even... What would not be allowed? What you're just saying. I'm not allowed to have my own perception of an experience? No, someone would not tell you that. Okay, then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you can have and dream and hallucinate, take drugs, booze, whatever, or just plain be nuts. And no, nobody says that you don't have a right to do that. You have a right to be as crazy as you want to be. You have a right to believe in every hallucinogenic thing that there is. Thank Nobody's you. saying that you don't have a right. What we're saying is it doesn't exist. In my head, it does. Let me rephrase it. There is no reason to believe in anything unless a person puts out first the proposition that's definable, that we all understand what the proposition is. And once the proposition is put forth, you then must adduce evidence for it. Unless you have those two things, you have an unfounded belief, which is what we call faith. This is, and I understand your point, this is my point. What is any belief? in someone's head. It's evidence based on input through your senses or however you perceive the world. 
And my thing is, is that, you know, atheists a lot of times say, no, you're not allowed to perceive the world any other way other than fill in the blank. And the input is already there. And I'm going, okay, so all these things that happened, all these conclusions, all these feelings, emotions, uh, senses, uh, experiences, I'm not allowed to come up to a conclusion that's not atheist or even Christian enough. It's always somebody else trying to impose their belief system on me. I have enough self-esteem and confidence. I can pretty much keep it straight in my own head. A lot of people aren't able to, so they are susceptible to either side. That's my point. We'll be right back. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured. 